if you're going to make decisions that you'll spend money on, you need to dig down further and get more concrete numbers as to what you can expect. You're listening to the She Renovates podcast. You're listening to She Renovates, the podcast for women who want to renovate to create an income and a life they love. Hello, hello, everyone. Bernadette back. That nutter behind me is Louise, for those of you who are watching. So we're at a conference today, but I'm... Um... Hello, hello. The gorgeous <laughs> Dale Beaumont who brought us all together. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh golly me. Let me gather myself. Okay, so we're about to um, get into today's topic. And what I'm going to be doing is something different. Because one of my um, listeners got in touch and asked an opinion about her project via SpeakPipe. And I thought, let's do something different. So what I'm going to do is walk you through the steps that I would take to make decisions about what to do to maximise the performance of the property and the value. But before I do that, I want to tell you about our upcoming roadshow. So we're starting in Adelaide. So Louise, who you just met, she's the crazy woman. And Joe Videlo and I are going to be a tour, be doing a tour of Australia. And we're starting in Adelaide. So most of the uh, the locations will be in the second half of the year, but we're going to Adelaide first. And so if you would like to come and join us, we're going to be talking about the things that you need to um that you need to think about when you make a decision to buy a property. It's for women in particular, because, you know, often women are the drivers of the family strategy. And um, so our goal is to arm you with the information you need to make savvy decisions that will benefit your family. So the Adelaide event is on the 23rd of March, which is a Thursday evening. And so there's no ticket price, it's free. However, we're doing a thing called a ticket for good. So if anyone wants to pay for a ticket, the money will go to a local charity. So if you go to the landing page, it'll tell you all about it. So we're very grateful to Coroma in Adelaide for putting on the hospitality for the evening. It'll be quite a meaty presentation. So you'll get lots of value out of it. And we just really love to see you. So check that out and the link will be in an event post on this page or in this group so that you want, if you want to book in a ticket, remember you don't have to pay anything if you can't afford it. If you can, we'd love you to contribute to, you know, a small um, ticket price and, and I'm, I'm not sure how much of it, but a large majority of that goes to a local charity. So let's get into today's topic. Um, And so this is the property that uh, Christy sent to me and it's to Pindara Court, Grovedale. And I can't remember the details exactly. I should have put them on the slide, but basically they bought this in 2021 for 651,000. And so what Christy is wanting to know is this is a long-term investment and uh, in terms of improving it, what should she be thinking about? And I suspect that I might be thinking slightly different to Christy. So what I thought I'd do is go through the steps um, so that you can um, yeah, follow along and it'll give you some idea of, of what to do. Now, the first step before we start thinking about what, what how to improve this property we need to do some research. Now, I'm just going to do very high level research. If you are planning to, when you're planning to spend money, you need to go deeper than I'm going to be today. But I want to do this to just indicate the areas that can help point you to where you should be looking. And so the first thing I would be looking at at this is equity versus cash flow. So If you're thinking about doing a reno, is it to increase the equity in the property so that you can go off and um, 
do more things with that increased equity or is it in to increase the cash flow or is it both? And so I'm, I'm going to consider that it's both and that's the basis of the step that I'll be doing. Now, uh, at 651000 with an income of around $500 a week, it's almost certain that this property is negatively geared. And so that is an undesirable situation because it eats into your personal cash flow. So that would be something that I would be suggesting that, that Christy considers. So firstly, I went and did a desktop valuation. While these things are not overly reliable, I think this is a good indication of the value of the property. And it suggests that um, Christy has bought really well. So it's um, saying its estimated value is 760 when she paid 651, I think. And that range could be between 716 and 807. And while there's a high degree of confidence in that, the, the variation would be because um, there's no evidence for um, any improvement that's been in the property, the, the specific location. So there is always going to be some variation. And so you need to keep that in mind. Another thing that I would do um, at this point is go down through the comparables that are uh, given to support that valuation and just look at how they compare the, and look at the ones that are valued higher to see how they compare to your property and whether you can achieve that, you know, a similar condition or amenity that those properties have in order to improve the valuation of your property. So the next thing I would do is go to realestate.com and go to the suburb and look at the median buy price for a four bedroom house in that suburb. And here we can say, see that they're saying a median price for a four bedroom is 762, which correlates pretty well with the valuation that came up on the desktop valuation. The other thing I would do is then look at the um, rental the median rental and see how that compares to how the property is being rented. So here it's saying that the median rental for a four bedroom is $540 a week. I would definitely be looking at seeing if I can improve that. So I, I think Christy said she's getting about 500 a week. So for a property that's worth 700 and around 750, um, you'd want to try and improve that because it will be eating a hole in your pocket. So the next thing I did was went to Airbnb and did an assessment of what you would return in this property with Airbnb. It's important to note that with all these figures, they are jelly, okay? If you're going to make decisions that you'll spend money on, you need to dig down further and get more concrete numbers as to what you can expect. But for a high level, this is okay. And so... Basically, I checked that if we put this property on Airbnb, it's got four bedrooms, two bathrooms, it could accommodate eight guests, two in each bedroom. And it spat out that the annual revenue would be 78,000, roughly average daily rate of 456, with an occupancy rate of 47%. Okay, so I would not go and immediately slap that on Airbnb because um, I'd want further proof of the figures. Now, and the other thing to note is that I don't think AirDNA is really keeping up with the, um, the drop-off in some areas of Airbnb. So you want to really, um, yeah, you want to get more concrete figures on that. But it's a good indication. My rule of thumb, thumb is that generally you want to be getting about double uh, what you'd be getting in a um, long-term rental to justify the amount of work that it takes and the, I guess, less guaranteed income. I don't have any concerns about the guests and, you know, Airbnb guests compared to tenants, I personally think are a safer bet. You have more control over them. You have more access to the property and you're able to put in place policies that help you to protect that property. 
So based on the, um, so at the moment it's getting about 25,000 a year. So here it says it gets closer to three times that much. It's probably worth taking some further steps to, um, to determine how realistic those figures are. Okay, so then I thought we'll look at what affordable accommodation offers. So I went to flatmates.com. Um, there are better ways, but I, this is sort of quick and easy. And so it's showing that roughly $200 a room is the going rate. Yeah, so, and there was plenty of demand. So you're talking about four bedrooms, roughly $200 each. With both affordable accommodation and Airbnb, there is some cost in compliance. And also you've got to remember that you need to pay the power bill, you need to pay the internet, and you need to maintain the grounds. So um, that additional money is not, it's not net. But I'll talk a little bit more about that when we get to look at the floor plan. And then the last thing I did, still on the affordable accommodation um, quest, is to look at what one better rental properties were on realestate.com and there was very little. Now that suggests to me that there may be a need for um, room by room accommodation. In fact, the only property that was available um, was a shared house. And so there's pretty soulless looking bedroom, but um, that was all that was on the market and it was for $150 per week. I'll talk a little bit more about that when we get onto the floor plan. So this is the property. So one of the things, so Christy's asked for what should she be focusing on in order, in order to improve the, the property and the income. Well, you know, if you're, particularly if you're going for Airbnb or um, share accommodation to increase the income, then I'd probably look at making the garden a little bit uh, lower maintenance. It looks like the lawn's half dead, which is not a great look. Um, its front looks good, but um, out the back. So I'd be really looking at what you can do with that. It's a great floor plan. It's a really great house and a great buy. And I really want to congratulate you, Christy. So I would definitely, at some point in time, add a second bathroom because a four bedroom house with one bathroom oh where actually sorry no it's got a second bathroom take that all back if you're going to go for affordable accommodation I'd probably convert the laundry I'd probably put a shower in the laundry so that you had an additional bathroom in terms of anything I would do with the floor plan if you're going to go affordable accommodation I'd probably look at turning this a living room into a bedroom so that you've got five bedrooms five bedrooms three bathrooms would give you much bigger earning capacity the only other thing that I would consider doing is sort of a cosmetic makeover and I'll just go through the rooms like what you need to do in the bathroom is pretty obvious if you wanted to do something that was really cheap and cheerful you could probably just spray everything and but I would take this bench top off and put a new bench, a new um, sink and tapware, probably change the tapware if you're going to do a sort of a minor um, cost makeover, change the tap, the bench and the basin and spray everything else white. That's a quick and dirty makeover to, to turn it into something very respectable and updated. Uh, incidentally, we don't spray the floor because it just doesn't last. Doesn't matter how many coats you do, in the long run, if you try and um, paint the floor, it will come off. So either often the floor, you can live with what you've got just by cleaning up the grout, but uh, failing that, just tile over it. So I think this is the ensuite. So once again, you could probably spray it. I personally feel that a, um, I would be pulling that shelf down looks awful change the tapware um, and the accessories modernize them i would put a mirror doored shower a shaving cabinet over that um, splashback and obviously change the splashback whether it's to spray it or retile it um, it doesn't matter 
but just basically modernize it in a very low cost way. Kitchen definitely needs some improvement. I would probably be looking for a really good quality secondhand kitchen and switch all this out. Usually you can get the appliances a lot for, you know, three or 4,000. Obviously that's not the end of the cost, but generally speaking, you can um, really spruce it up very cost effectively. I really like the arches. I think it's um, it's of an era, but I, I really like them. Uh, but I do think the property would, would benefit from a, um, a, a sort of a cosmetic makeover throughout. Okay, it's got a great big shed there. And, you know, I don't think there's a lot that needs to be said about that. So that's pretty much how I would go and my main um, focus would be to increase the income. So firstly, you would look at if you gave it a makeover, smartened up the bathrooms and the kitchen, what sort of income, what sort of increase would that give you for your rent? But then if you're thinking about going down the Airbnb or the share accommodation path, then um, obviously you're looking at uh, hopefully bigger increases in your return, but then there are other considerations in terms of management of it and the type of reno that you do. For instance, if you're going for share accommodation, I would definitely put another um, bedroom in and I would I would add a shower to the laundry so you could boast three bathrooms uh, because when you've got five people in a house, you want to make sure that there's not going to be disputes over the bathroom but either way I would definitely want to see you increasing that that cash flow and that will also flow on to increasing improving the the equity in the home important to note that if you do go for a high cash flow strategy you will need to get insurance specifically for that because it's it doesn't come under the standard landlord's insurance you want to make sure that you've got that covered off. I think that's got all I've got to say about the topic. Has anyone got anything they want to add to this conversation? Something else I did want to mention, the other thing that I would do is book in for a chat with John Linderman. Um, you just go to his website and ha get a bit of a lowdown on where he sees the, um, the market, the Geelong market going. I'm not going to proclaim to be an area expert, so um, you, you're better to go to someone that is um, living and breathing research and just get an understanding of, you know, what's happening in that local area and, you know, into the future. That's about all I've got for today. I hope it's helpful and um, I'll see you again next week. This is the She Renovates podcast. To discover how to harness the power of renovating, check out theschoolofrenovating.com.